Welcome to Bethany Lutheran on this first Sunday after Christmas. In case you may not remember from last year, when the first Sunday after Christmas falls within a couple days of Christmas, I do not preach an actual sermon on that Sunday because I believe people are weary from the holiday season and are not mentally ready to absorb deep theology. So I offer some lighter fare instead. Now first, I need to give credit to pastors Ian Paul and Stephen Carlson, from whose writings I glean much of this information via my Old Testament professor, Pastor Kent Wallace. For the last week, we've looked at the nativity story from the Bible, and we sang many dearly loved carols and hymns based on the biblical account of Jesus' birth. Even if we were not raised in a Christian home, we probably knew the basics of the Christmas story and heard some of the carols and Christmas hymns in holiday concerts or on the radio or television. Well, today I'd like to take a look at some of the facts or the details we think are fact. I suggest you pick up your Bible and turn to the second chapter of the book of Luke, where we find the record of the birth of Jesus. Now, I'm going to read this to you, but if you'd like to follow in your Bible, hit pause, pick up your Bible, and turn to Luke 2. According to the Christmas carols, the Son of God was born in the little town of Bethlehem in Judea. A drafty stable sat along a nameless back street, and inside we find a young man, his bride, and their newborn baby. In the soft light of the lantern, we see the baby lying in the cattle manger. A donkey, cow, and an ox lie serenely on the edge of the scene. Kneeling close by Mary, Joseph, and a small lamb watch in silent adoration of the child. All is calm. All is not quite right. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the Bible does not say Jesus was born in a stable. Let's look at that birth account, starting at verse 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, in case you're wondering, I looked up several translations. All of them say that the baby was laid in a manger, and that there was no room for them in the inn. Medieval Bible illustrators and the writers of the bulk of the carols, hymns, and poetry did not know much about first century Palestinian culture, so the authors went on their knowledge of their society. A manger was a domesticated animal's feeding trough, and it would be located in the animal's home, normally a stable. But this was not the reality of the nativity setting. The start of the confusion is most likely in the translation of the Greek word kataluma in verse 7. A kataluma is a spare room in a private house where travelers received hospitality and where no payment was expected. The older versions of the Bible translated as inn. There was no room for them in the inn. It's the same word used for the upper room where Jesus and his disciples would eat the Last Supper. It's clearly a reception room in a private home. A totally unrelated word is used for an inn, such as in the account of the Good Samaritan leaving the injured man at an inn. Understanding the historical and social context would tell us that it would be unthinkable for Joseph, returning to the place of his ancestors, that he would not be received by family members. 
Even if they had never met, Joseph only had to say, I am Joseph, son of Jacob, son of Mathen, son of Eleazar. And the immediate response would be, you are welcome. What can we do for you? If Joseph did not have some member of the extended family in the village, he was honor bound to seek them out. But if there was none in the village of his family as a member of the famous house of David for the sake of David, he would still be welcomed into almost any village home. Then we need to consider the design of the Palestinian home, many of which are the same today. Most families would live in a single room house with a lower compartment for the animals to be brought in at night, either a room and either a room at the back for visitors or a space on the roof. For the Cataluma to have no room probably meant that many, like Joseph and Mary, had traveled to Bethlehem and the family guest room was already full with other relatives. So Joseph and Mary must stay with the family itself in the main room of the house. There Mary gave birth and lay the baby in the hay-filled depression at the lower end of the house where the animals were fed, much as a destitute mother might lay her baby in a dresser drawer. The message of the incarnation is that Jesus came to be one of us and one with us. It would fit well that his birth took place in a normal, crowded, warm, welcoming Palestinian house, just like any other Jewish boy of that time. Think of pictures you've seen of Mary and Joseph on the way to Bethlehem. How did they travel? Typically, we see Joseph walking and leading a donkey carrying Mary. Now read that nativity story again and tell me where it says that Mary rode a donkey. We hope she didn't have to make the trip on foot in her circumstances, but the biblical account does not mention a donkey. Another misrepresentation in our Christmas programs is in regard to the wise men. The book of Matthew gives us this part of the Christmas story in chapter two you may want to hit pause and turn to chapter 2 of Matthew in your Bible. It reads, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream to not return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Nowhere does it say there were three wise men. Some translations say magi. They were not kings, and we do not know their names. They were of noble birth, educated, 
wealthy, and influential. They probably were philosophers, counselors of rulers. They would have traveled in a caravan with supplies and protection. They saw the star that appeared on the night of Jesus' birth. They consulted among themselves and then they planned and finally started their journey from the east. In fact, verse 9 says, The star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Not the baby, but the child. All this goes to show how much we read scripture through the lens of our own assumptions, cultures, and traditions. How hard it is to read well-known texts carefully and see what they actually say. The nativity account is rich enough in its true form. We do not need to embellish it. And knowing the truth should not disrupt our beliefs or ruin our children's Christmas programs. There was no little drummer boy and no halos over the heads of Joseph and Mary. There was no holy family, just an ordinary man and woman doing their best to do God's will. I think it's good to know that Jesus came just as God intended. In the midst of our ordinary daily lives, to be with us in our highs and lows, living like us and fully understanding what we feel and what we fear. That should be good enough to make us sleep in heavenly peace. Amen. Thank you.